Hilltop is about an hour and 15 minutes drive south of Cleveland in Tuscarawas County. And this is Ohio's biggest and meanest toboggan run. Consider this, the start is like perching on the edge of a roof and then dropping two stories to the refrigerated chute below. As you hurtle down the half mile run, the wind literally starts whistling by your ears as you approach speeds of up to 70 miles per hour. Unless you're really concerned about appearances, a good warm knit cap is what you need here. Just remember, the colder the day, the colder the wind chill factor. This toboggan run is located in the middle of the Bear Creek campgrounds in East Sparta. That's just south of Kent. Now let's take an up close and very personal look at what it's like to ride this thing. I can't see. <laughs> Did I do it again? You bet. And when the evening comes and you've had your fill of sledding, take time to tour nearby Sugar Creek, Ohio, the little Switzerland of the state, and see some of the holiday lights that light and warm the night. Even the murals that decorate the local service station have taken on a winter holiday theme. And on the hills around the town, many of the homes sparkle in the night, spreading the joy of the season. You can reach both East Sparta and Sugar Creek by driving south on Interstate 77. And best of all, it's just a holiday one tank trip. I'm Neil Zucker, News Center 8. And other good news, the Coats for Kids campaign got a tremendous boost. My child week is looking at some interesting and exciting things for the whole family to do in a special holiday series of one tank trips. Tonight among his stops are a winter trip to the zoo and experiencing Christmas of a hundred years ago. This is the Hayes Presidential Center, once home to U.S. President Rutherford B. Hayes. And depending on the weather this week, you can tour the estate's grounds by horse-drawn carriage or by sleigh when the snow is deep enough. This was the first presidential library in the United States and is unique by the fact that it also contains Hayes' home and burial place. Inside the mansion, the holidays of the 1880s in America come alive. Special Christmas decorations will be up until New Year's Day. In Sandusky, if the lake is frozen, let's grab an air taxi and make a run out to South Bass Island to catch up with ice fishing guide Pat Chrysler. When the ice is just right, he'll take you miles out onto the lake where the big fish are biting. Nine and a quarter pounds right on the money, 27 inches. But that was caught by another of Pat's clients. When I put my fishing line in the water... Fish right there with your lure. I do? Right now, yeah. Well, he's not... I'm dropping him down there. All right. And I'm going to snitch that fish from you. He may have been there, but he never took the hook. We'll wrap up our day with a stop in Toledo. Here at the Lucas County Recreational Center, holiday tradition continues. Over 50 animated scenes that fill this auditorium turning it into a land filled with fantasy for kids of all ages. And before we leave, take a nighttime break at the Toledo Zoo. Here, a quarter of a million lights have been woven around trees and forms to bring the night alive with animals and exotic shapes. Best of all, Toledo, Fremont and the Lake Erie Islands can easily be reached from Cleveland by the Ohio Turnpike. 
It's just a holiday one tank trip. I'm Neil Zucker, News Center 8. those things. That looks like fun. It does. And that's our news. That has been going on for more than 60 years. There was a time that downtown store windows at this time of year could be magical to a youngster as a visit inside the store. And to keep that magic alive, the Cleveland Health Museum has again created its miniature town, Holiday Train Village. Some of these miniatures are so lifelike that it's hard to realize they measure in inches, not feet. Take this tiny room for example. It's just about as messy as my room used to be when I was a youngster. Walking through here, peering into tiny windows, can make you feel like Gulliver in the land of Lilliput. A giant-sized eye view into a familiar world grown very small. Just across the way is the Holiday Train Village with its two trains running back and forth. The Where's Waldo character, a favorite of childhood, is hidden somewhere within the display. A display that features skating mice and human-like animals. An electric train, despite its familiarity, still has the power to mesmerize youngsters as it travels around and around. While the miniatures in Holiday Village is only here through the new year, the rest of the museum is also open, and the young people will delight in all the hands-on things to do here. And if there ever was a Cleveland holiday tradition, it's General Electric's Neela Park Holiday Display. This is the 67th year the lighting company has illuminated their Neela Park plant, and it still brings thousands of motorists past the facility each evening. Over 200,000 light bulbs were used this year to create this fantasy of light that generations of greater Clevelanders keep coming back to see. If the batteries and the new toys have gone dead and boredom is setting in, get out of the house and go on a holiday one tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. Thank you, Neil. I've always loved trains. Yep. That's our news at 6. We thank Covered Hill. Well, okay, we need some cooperation from the weather. But our traveling man, Neil Zerker, says one of the best sledding hills around is in the snow belt. He'll show us during this special holiday edition, One Tank Trip. This is Punderson State Park, east of Cleveland in Newberry, Ohio. And it offers one of the best sledding hills around. But bring your own toboggan, or if you prefer that 1941 American flyer you've had stored in the garage. When it's cold outside, the hill is fast and steep. Just be careful of the nearby woods, where I almost ended up. The best part at Mission here is free, and the hill is open anytime there's enough snow. Another feature here at Punderson State Park is cross-country skiing. Even if you've never tried it, this is the place for you. The trails are fairly level, and the hills, for the most part, gentle. If you don't have any skis, don't worry. There's a concession stand here that rents all the equipment that you'll need. And you can make it a real getaway by renting one of these cozy cabins that have both water and heat. This is the only time of the year that they can be rented usually by the night instead of by the week. And of course, the beautiful Manor House Lodge is also available if you want to spend the night. Speaking of night, when the lights go on, a drive through nearby Chardon is a chance to see one of the loveliest towns of the Western Reserve at its holiday finest. From its New England-style square to the warmth of the business places along the main street, you'll find it hard to escape the holiday spirit here. And best of all, all of this is just a holiday one-tank trip away. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8.
Just bring on the snow. Absolutely. And that is our report of news for this Thursday evening. We hope you'll join us again tonight at 11. And as we say goodbye, we'd like to share with you during the holidays. And by now, if your Christmas time budget has run out of gas, then Neil can suggest this free one tank trip to a spot that looks like a holiday print from Courier and Ives. Weather permitting, the sound of sleigh bells will again bring forth memories out here in Geauga County at the Swine Creek Reservation of the Geauga County Park System. Every weekend, these huge horses are hooked up to this old-fashioned sleigh, and anyone visiting the park is invited to hop aboard for a sleigh ride throughout the park. The price? Absolutely free. If animation fascinates you, let's take a side trip north to Ashtabula and the North Coast Christmas World, here on West Prospect Street. This year-round Christmas store really goes all out during the holiday season. This year they have more than 60 animated figures and lighting displays that include upwards of 50,000 lights. While they hope you might buy something, there's no charge to wander through the store enjoying the displays. And finally, let's take one more look at the lights of this holiday season. Lights from the many places we've visited over the past few weeks. Perhaps as we bask in their glow and marvel at their colors, we can also reflect on the many wonderful things that have happened this past year. As we approach the beginning of a new year, we can all hope that the best of times may be yet to come. Happy Holidays, I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8, on a one-tank trip. But you'll have to bring your own snow. And that's our news at 6. We thank you for sharing your time with us and invite you to join us. The roads led him in 1991 and some of the highlights of his favorite journeys. Here's Neil and a special year-end one tank trip. We saw a lot of roads during 1991, my little metropolitan and I, and we picked up a few memories along the way. From the Fanta Suites, a unique hotel outside of Indianapolis, where we spent the night in a bed made out of an old covered wagon to the charm of Paint Valley Place, a lovely bed and breakfast near Millersburg, Ohio. I even spent the night in jail, sort of, in Bardstown, Kentucky, at a quaint bed and breakfast that was created from an actual old jail. There were adventures, like taking a first ride on a new wooden roller coaster at Cedar Point. I can still feel the butterflies in my stomach as we plunged almost straight down the first hill a mere 250 feet. Oh, oh, my and from the heights of a roller coaster, we also traveled more than a half mile underground at the seldom seen mine near Johnstown, Pennsylvania, for a first hand look at how coal used to be mined. The first thing he did, he always took his pick, went across to face that room and checked it every day. Because roof can be good today and bad tomorrow. We stretched a one-tank trip all the way to Washington, D.C., in time to welcome home the troops from Operation Desert Storm, and to take my son Craig along for a look at some of the attractions in our nation's capital. There was the memory of a quiet spring afternoon's float down the Mohican River in Loudonville, a pleasant passage through some gentle rapids. There was the chance to see craftsmen at work, hand carving wooden steeds for a merry-go-round at the carousel works in Mansfield. And there was food, everything from French fried spinach leaves at an inn in northeast Pennsylvania to a restaurant in Finley, Ohio that serves nothing but turkey as its main course. We also found a restaurant in the local IGA grocery store in Millersburg, Ohio that offered fresh food from its Amish staffed kitchen. B2. G, 58. We joined a floating bingo game on the Ohio River. O, 61. Bingo! And went bargain hunting at flea markets. 
In early December, we went Christmas tree hunting on a horse-drawn wagon in Ashtabula County during a heavy snowstorm. It proved to be the closest we came this year to a white Christmas. And now as the new year begins and we commit the old year to memory, it's time to think of new roads, new places to go, and more adventure, and all of it on a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker. Happy New Year. And that's our report for this New Year's Day. CBS's Evening News is coming up next. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Ohio's Amish country to see what's new to discover an Amish country in and to introduce us to a man who makes his living taking pictures of the Amish. Here's Neil and a one tank trip. The sound of bells ring through the hills surrounding the Doughty Valley here in Holmes County. The easy clip-clop of horses' hooves can be heard. The tourists are mostly gone this time of year. There's a new bell tower just about completed at the Googiesburg Cheese Company. This is where baby Swiss cheese was born. And they still make tons of it every day to be sold here and shipped around the world. At the end of the valley is the Village of Charm and its Country View Inn Bed and Breakfast. This lovely inn is only about a year old and operated by an Amish and Mennonite family. All rooms have private baths and are air conditioned. Family members have created the beautiful quilts that adorn each of the 15 bedrooms. As for the breakfast, well, my son Craig and I sat down to an egg, cheese, and bacon casserole, fresh muffins, homemade sausage, French toast, mixed fruit, and some fresh squeezed orange juice. Prices in 1992 for a room with breakfast included range from $65 to $93 a night. Reservations are a must. And if you would like to take some of this lovely Amish countryside home with you, you can. Captured through the lens of this man, Doyle Yoder, photographer of Amish life. I grew up in the area here, in fact, just south of uh, where we're at here, about a mile or two, and uh, I always thought it was about the prettiest place around, and I uh, always felt I had a, had a good touch for, for uh, capturing a scene. And... These are some of Doyle's pictures. While not Amish himself, his appreciation of the Amish way of life has allowed him to capture on film sensitive portraits of the photography shy Amish. So far, Doyle has produced four calendars of the Amish country scenes, and later this year will complete a pictorial book called America's Amish Country, with photos from every Amish community in the United States. For those of us who love Ohio's Amish areas, it sounds like a rare treat. Charm in the Doughty Valley, a wonderful destination for a winter one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thanks for sharing your time with us, and we hope to see you back. Try a trip to the northwest corner of Ohio. You'll find that and a whole lot more. Here's Neil on a one-tank trip. Northwest Ohio, where the table flat landscape is only broken by the appearance of an occasional farm. These silos may be the tallest buildings for miles around. Yet this lonely countryside is dotted with small towns. Interesting small towns like Archbold, Ohio. Home of perhaps the most unusual used car dealer in the state. Just off Ohio Route 66 in this large building is the Oberhaus business. But once inside, you discover what looks more like a museum than a used car agency. First, the used cars are classics, some worth a fortune. There are over 80 vehicles here, mostly Cadillacs and old Pierce Arrows. Some of the cars are for sale, but most are just part of Ed Oberhaus's personal collection, and it's not just cars that he collects. We have Victrolas, we have old irons, we have antique lamps, license plates, musical instruments. We have a trumpet over there that dates clear back to 1918. We have a complete set of beer can collection. The collection is open to the public six days a week, closed on Sunday. Admission is free, but donations are accepted. A good place to find out what's happening in town is the local diner where local folks eat. In Archbold, it's the home restaurant. Special today are beef and noodles, 
chicken enchiladas or beans and fries. The prices are low, the portion's good sized, and the people are friendly. You can't ask for much more. And if you like to bargain hunt, Archbold is home to Souter Furniture that is sold nationwide. This is their factory outlet store where you can save considerable money on their closeouts and scratch and dent rejects. The only problem, you have to assemble it when you get home. There is uh, no gluing, all it is is uh, nails. Incidentally, the factory store accepts no credit cards, only cash or checks. Northwest Ohio, an interesting one day journey, and best of all, it's just a one tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thank you for sharing your time with us, and we hope to see you way to a college town, all part of a winter one tank trip. If you're looking for a midwinter getaway right in your own backyard, Check out the beauty and tranquility of Oberlin in Lorain County. This small college town offers a weekend that can be filled with culture, as well as a comfortable place to stay. The college's Allen Memorial Art Museum is one of Oberlin's treasures. It's the largest college art museum in America, and contains old masters from as far back as the 17th century. Besides the beauty of some of these works, the museum also houses a modern and contemporary exhibit that can be great fun, such as this subway token booth with nude commuters. The art museum is open Tuesday through Sunday. Just next door is another landmark in this town, the Oberlin Inn. They've just undergone a one million dollar renovation, and you can stay in one of these oversized bedrooms, furnished in early American style for as little as fifty dollars a night. And there have been other changes. We do have a liquor license. Uh, the liquor license we obtained about three years ago, which has helped tremendously in the popularity of our restaurant as, as well as weekend getaways. And there's even more. If culture's not your cup of tea, try the Apollo Theater. It's been around showing movies for over a half century. And the New York Times says one of the best chefs in Northern Ohio works at this tiny restaurant on South Main Street with the unlikely name of the Main Street Mercantile Store and Tea Room. A typical lunch offering includes two very interesting salads and a sandwich, but it's evening when the chef starts to shine. Ellie's having a grilled shrimp and black bean sauce and a Cornish hen. The tiny restaurant only seats 25 people at a time, and they accept no reservations, so there are often lines. A college town getaway, and best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8 in Oberlin, Ohio. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thank you. Home of the annual Woolly Bear Festival. And Neil says even when the woolly bears aren't around, there are plenty of things to see and do on a one-tank trip. Remember this? This was Vermilion, Ohio last autumn as thousands crammed the town for Dick Goddard's annual Woolly Bear Festival. Most of the tourists have gone home now, and the seagulls are pretty much the largest number of visitors to the town in midwinter. And that's a perfect time to visit some of the places here, like Papa Joe's Pie Shop. And we're not talking those little namby-pamby pies you buy in the grocery store. We're talking real honest-to-gosh deep dish pies. Shirley, how big is that pie? Ten inches. Ten inches, mm -hmm. how deep? Uh, approximately two and a half. Two and a half inches mm -hmm. deep. That, that must weigh how much? Any idea? Uh, it was weighed at one time, and I believe it was about three pounds. And they don't turn out two or three pies a day. They turn out 3,000 a week. And fruit pies are not all they make here. They're equally well known for their pizza pies and their submarine sandwiches featuring flat meatballs but it's the fruit pies that bring local folks to the door about six o'clock every morning. Some people bring their own dish for us to bake a pie in their own pie dish. Around the corner down at the Great Lakes Museum, there's some new attractions. A full-size replica of Vermilion's first lighthouse, 
built in the 1800s. It's been constructed near the observation deck and should be open to visitors by spring. And the pilot house of the former Lake Freighter Canopus is being built onto the museum and restored to its original condition. In its heyday, the Canopus hauled new cars from Detroit to Cleveland. A visit to the Great Lakes Museum and one of Papa Joe's humongous pies, just a couple of good reasons to take a winter one-tank trip out to Vermilion. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. How does your Toyota dealer stay? That's the destination this week of our traveling man, Neil Zerker, as he sets out for Wayne and Medina counties on a one-tank trip. I spend a lot of the time on the road looking for bargains. One of my favorite stops is here in Dalton, Ohio, at a place called the Country Outlet. They carry closeouts, seconds, and discontinued furniture from major department stores, and prices are good. For example, this replica of an antique oak office chair. The uh, office chair, uh, which is sold to a national chain for around $199, I sell for $99. Now well, they've added something new, offering other kinds of merchandise, and have created a sort of mini mall inside their building by renting space to other dealers. We have up to, at different times of the year, 20 different people, and... Uh, Everything from what to what? From nuts and bolts to pots and pans to furniture to glassware to... One feature to remember about an outlet store is that merchandise is constantly changing. What you find this week may be gone next week. We found this little bit of the 1950s flourishing in Medina, just off the square. It's called Dan's Dogs. And while they do specialize in hot dogs, great hot dogs, they also have some other things like this root beer float, big enough for four. Or their onion rings, which they claim are the best in town. As for the customers, well, they seem to be of all ages, but the decor is definitely the 1950s. We kind of like the 50s. The 50s is such an, it was an innocent time and we wanted to bring that back. Everybody loves the 50s. The young kids come in and they love it and the older people reminisce. A soda fountain and some bargain hunting. Just the thing for a pleasant drive in the country. And best of all, it's just a one tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. Always well, makes us hungry. Did those <laughs> onion rings look good? Ooh. That's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thanks for sharing your time with us, and we hope to see you back here tonight at 11. Have a good night. Valentine's Day is approaching, and our traveling man, Neil Zerker, is spending this week on the road looking at some romantic getaway destinations for you and that special someone. Tonight, Neil says he's found a place where you can let your imagination run wild all on a one-tank trip. The Sheraton Valley Forge Hotel in Pennsylvania claims to have a room to match almost any romantic fantasy. You say you'd like to spend the night in a cave. Well, welcome to seclusion. This suite comes complete with stalactites and stalagmites. Prehistoric drawings on the walls of the cave. Yet it also offers such modern amenities as a queen-size bed. And in a nearby rock pile, you'll also find a whirlpool bath to refresh you after a day of hunting imaginary saber-toothed tigers. And instead of rocks to recline on, how about this pillow-filled ledge? If the cave makes you a little claustrophobic, then how about this one that leaps into the future? It looks like a bedroom you might find on Star Trek. Or if you've always wanted to be the center of attention, then you'll want to reserve this suite that contains a small stage with a queen-size bed center stage. And for entertainment, there's even an antique pump organ. It's called the Royal Theater Suite. If you like the out of doors, then you'll want to spend a night in Nature's Kingdom Suite. You pass this tree loaded with Spanish moss and find a tent filling the room that offers a comfortable bed that appears to be located in the middle of an African safari. Nearby is a hidden whirlpool bath big enough for two. This was one of my favorites, the OK Corral. 
Here I could sit on a log cabin front porch, rock while contemplating the mural of the western landscape. Even the door to the bathroom has a real early western look. What does it cost to spend a night here? The fantasy suites range in price from $125 to $175 a night, and they will be discounted on nights of low occupancy, which are normally weekdays. I chose to spend the night in this suite. It was called the Pharaoh's Chamber. I always wanted to sleep like a king, and here you can. In all, there are over 70 of the fantasy suites, each different, in the hotel. And that's not all. This is also home to Lily Langtree's Dinner Theater with a top-notch Vegas-style show that includes dancers, singers, and even ice skaters. It's been called one of the best shows in the Philadelphia area, and it's right outside your bedroom door. In our next romantic getaway, we're going to visit a secluded cabin on a hillside that you can rent by the night or by the week all on a special one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, New Center 8. Hmm. <laughs> Happy Valentine's, Pilgrim. <laughs> oh, That's our news geez. at 6. We'll see you back here at 11 following tonight's cover. A great trip suggestion. Each night this week, Neil is showing us romantic getaways that are just a one-tank trip. Tonight, he has a destination for those that want just the basics. If you believe a romantic getaway should be far away from the modern world in a primitive log cabin, a place far out in the country, down a farmer's lane where the only sound is the whisper of wind, a spot where a horse-drawn carriage can move across the horizon on a winter's day and not seem out of place, if that's what you're looking for, I think we found it here at Countryside Campers Paradise in Holmes County. For about $16 a person per night, you can have one of these sturdy little Amish-built log cabins with everything you need inside except for food and ice. Your heat is furnished by a small wood-burning stove that you'll have to keep stoked. Fortunately, there's a good supply of wood stacked on the front porch. No switches to throw here when it gets dark. You light the coal oil lamps with a match. The cabinet in the corner holds your dishes. Lots of places to sleep here. The cabin contains a double bed, a fold-out couch, and in the loft are two more mattresses. For water, you have to go outside to this faucet that serves the whole compound. In fact, it's the only running water here. The bathroom, by the way, is that little building over there. If all of this is too much civilization, well, they also have two teepees that they rent by the night in warmer weather. Another nice thing about staying here at Countryside Campers Paradise is the way you're awakened in the morning to the smell of freshly baked bread, cookies, and rolls. In fact, you can walk up to the top of the hill to Miller's Bakery here, have a hot cup of coffee, and one of those fresh donuts. The bakery and the campground are operated by an Amish family, and the rolls they turn out in their kitchen are so big, they can only get four in a package. The pies are pretty good, too. The best idea, if you'd like reservations here, is to write for them because the owners are Amish and they don't have a telephone in their home. However, on Mondays, if you'd like to call them, they do have someone stationed near this payphone across the road. Just let it ring. Someone will eventually answer the phone. In our next report, we'll visit a romantic hideaway where we join a famous detective in trying to solve a murder mystery. It's all part of a special one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. We'll all be back tonight at 11 after another evening of exciting CBS coverage of the Winter Olympics. Hope to see you then. Good night. Tonight he discovers that a Riverside Inn tucked away in the woods far from town also offers some mysterious entertainment, a special one-tank trip. I arrived about 7 p.m. on a cold, snowy night. The squeaky door was the tip-off that something was about to happen.
There were all these people here on a getaway weekend. They had been transported in time back to 1939, to Hollywood. What was wrong with that? where a movie was being made about the life of mobster Poppy Leonardo. That great Hawaiian detective Charlie Chan was on hand to act as consultant. But before the movie could really get started, there was a murder. Poppy Leonardo's cheating girlfriend ended up in a coffin, met for a dummy in the movie. And that prompted Charlie Chan to go into action. Jesus! Jesus, that's not in the script, is it? While shooting scene in funeral home, coffin lid open, lady found dead, murdered. That what happened, Mr. Zerka. Are you sure she murdered? Yes, most absolutely sure. What Neil Zerka think? Lady kill self, then jump inside coffin? Most preposterous idea. <laughs> Never happened. <laughs> That's when they started telling me about this murder mystery weekend package they offer here. For $159.95 per person, you get a room at the inn for two nights and all of your meals. And best of all, become part of the show by trying to solve the murder mystery presented by Cloak and Dagger Productions, a group of professional actors. Nobody knows anybody, but by the time Sunday arrives, they, everybody knows everybody, and this cast simply gets, and I'm not putting you on, <laughs> a standing ovation after every performance. They're that good. We're not that far into it yet, but it's exciting at this point, sure. So far, I think it's great. The acting is really good, and, and they keep you interested and try and get you all involved. Now, I took some notes, and it's my theory that these are the major suspects in the case. The screenwriter, who was trying to break up with Leonardo's girlfriend. She had threatened to tell the mobster about the affair. And then there was the Hollywood gossip columnist, who had threatened to wreck the career of the star of the movie. And of course, there was Poppy Leonardo. I find out you ain't telling me the truth. Who was the murderer? Well, I can't tell you, but you can find out by visiting the Mohican Inn some weekend. Reservations, by the way, are required. In our next report, we visit a romantic, secluded island hideaway. And best of all, it's just a one tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. No, Neil didn't do it. <laughs> That's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. We'll all be back tonight at 11 after more exciting CBS coverage of the Winter Olympics. He's found it right in the middle of the ice out on Lake Erie. Here's Neil in tonight's special one tank trip. Half the fun of this romantic getaway is simply getting there. It starts at Griffin Flying Service in Sandusky, where for $14 a person each way, you can jump aboard one of Griffin's three flights daily out across Lake Erie to Kelly's Island. You can get a bird's eye view of the Sandusky Bay tourist area in the wintertime, and in about six minutes, you're ready to land at the island, the largest in Lake Erie. Our destination is the fly-in bed and breakfast, and the best part is that it's located right beside the runway, and the airplane literally drops you right at the front door. Host Ken Newfer is waiting to greet you. Airline travel doesn't get any more convenient than this. And what a pleasant surprise the inn is. Light and airy with a two-story cathedral ceiling in the great room. Lots of comfortable couches and chairs where you can curl up with a good book and the bedrooms. For $90 a night, you get a spacious room with a king-size bed, a walk-in closet, and a private bathroom with a whirlpool tub for two. Admittedly, there isn't an awful lot to do on Kelly's Island in the wintertime, but perhaps that's the beauty of the place. Up here, you have seclusion. You practically have an island in the middle of a frozen lake, almost all to yourself. There is a pool table and even a trampoline if you like to do your running indoors, but peace and quiet is what they're selling here. Very quiet and peaceful. Secluded. You can hear the birds in the morning when you wake up. <laughs> and when you do awaken, it's to the smell of fresh bacon frying, as Ken Newfer takes his turn in the kitchen to produce a breakfast that will just about carry you until dinner time. 
Reservations for the inn are requested, but Ken says this is a good time to get your choice of rooms during the winter months when the island is quiet. Busiest time is between uh, June and September, I would say. That's pretty hard to even get in here, that is. Uh, somewhat, you should book in advance, yes. All too soon, it's time to reboard the airplane and head back for the mainland. A great wintertime romantic getaway. And it's just a one-tank trip and a short airplane ride away. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8, over Kelly's Island. Now that's a good one. It is. I in, I would enjoy that. That's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Maybe catch a few walleye there, too. <laughs> if you like ice fishing. Yeah. We'll all be back tonight at 11 after CBS presents another exciting night of Winter Olympics coverage. Have a good night. Ohio, so if you're ready for a travel tip, here's Neil Zerker and a one tank trip. You might be surprised to learn that some women's coats that you see in major department stores are not only made in America, but are made right here in Ohio. This is the Sherwood Coat Company of Alliance. And if you would like, they'll give you a tour of the facility if you call first for reservations. You can see firsthand how cloth becomes an attractive coat. Tours are available only during working hours at the plant. And if you like bargains, don't leave without a stop at the factory's outlet store. Here you'll find all kinds of women's coats, from fake fur to all-weather raincoats. And the prices are really a bargain. How much can you save? I would say... 40 to 50 percent. And if you think that's good, listen to what they mark down their discontinued stock and irregulars. Oh, some of them are marked down 90 percent. That means that some of these coats that once sold in a department store for $199 now sell for just $19. The outlet store is open Monday through Saturday. Credit cards are accepted and merchandise can be exchanged. While in Alliance, try lunch or dinner at the Taster's Choice Cafe. They offer no deep-fried foods, but do have some excellent health alternatives, like chicken broccoli pie or turkey fruit salad. So we don't have french fries or hamburgers or anything like that. Not that we don't like those things, but we just don't do it here. What they do offer is an outstanding menu of health-conscious foods at very reasonable costs. The most expensive item on the dinner menu is $6.95. Now, after soothing your conscience by eating a healthy lunch, you can pig out at Heggie's Candy and Ice Cream Shop. Alliance residents have been eating their banana splits and sodas here for over 40 years. Alliance, Ohio, good food and some good bargains. And best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our news at 6. Thanks for sharing your time with us, and we hope to see you back here at 11 after another... Zanesville, Ohio is a great one-tank trip destination. Most people know that Zanesville, Ohio is home of the famous bridge that forks into a Y in the middle of the Muskingum River. But did you know that it's also the Pottery Center of Ohio? A half dozen pottery firms are in and around the town. The best known may be the Hearthstone Pottery. At their outlet store at the factory, you can buy discontinued patterns and factory seconds at a considerable savings of 20% below the wholesale price. And that's not all. We have two sales a year. We have a winter sale and a spring sale. And at that time, everything is priced 50% under wholesale. Hearthstone started many years ago by making cookie molds that they still sell. But their dinnerware and kitchenware is now sold in catalogs like L.L. Bean and was recently featured in Brides Magazine. The outlet store is open Monday through Saturday. They do accept credit cards. The Beware Sportswear Factory here in Zanesville does the embroidering on sweatshirts and sweaters for many big companies that sell to major league teams and colleges. In their factory store, you can buy their first grade merchandise at a slight savings, or for the real bargains, check out that table by the window in the front of the store. That's where the factory seconds are. Sweaters that sell for as little as $2 because of slight imperfections. Stores open Monday through Saturday. 
For lunch before you leave, try Zach's Restaurant in downtown Zanesville. This is home to the Jose Madrid Salsa Company. In fact, they make it right in the basement. It comes in red and green and is available in mild, medium, and hot. It's made from an old family recipe and is some of the best salsa that I've ever had. While it's available in grocery stores all over Ohio, you might want to take home a couple of jars fresh from the kettle. So for salsa, sweatshirts, and salad bowls at bargain prices, remember Zanesville, Ohio. It's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. career at WJW. In honor of this landmark occasion, TV8 President and General Manager Virgil Dominic, News Director Phyllis Quayle, and many of Neil's friends toasted the longtime reporter at a noontime party. And now we'd like you to join us on a very special one tank trip that spans 25 years. The story of a man who's every bit as interesting as the people and places he's introduced us to over the past quarter century. The road that brought Neil Zerker to WJW actually began in Lorain County. It was here at the Oberlin News Tribune that the Henrietta, Ohio native broke into journalism back in 1954. By 1960, he had traded in his pen for a microphone at WEOL in Illyria. And seven years later, then WJW News Director Norm Wagey hired Neil as TV8's first full-time street reporter. We were shooting black and white film, I think, at the time. I remember telling Norm Wagey I was going to try it for six months, and if it didn't work, I was going to go back to radio. Needless to say, Neil's experimental stint in television became a long-term passion. During his first years at TV8, Neil earned nationwide recognition for his documentary work, such as his heart-wrenching reports on the families of Vietnam POWs and MIAs. Neil's film on the decrepit condition of the Lorain County Children's Home was instrumental in getting the money raised to build a new orphanage. And the county commissioners told me to, if I was so concerned about it, that I might as well run the campaign to try to pass the levy. And I took the challenge, and we went out and we did it, and I think it's one of the things I've been proudest of all my life, that we, we got a new home in Oberlin for the kids. But it's Neil's off-the-beaten-path excursions that have endeared him to so many viewers over the years. Hi, welcome to RFD number two. When I first started at Channel 8, I used to do documentaries called RFD. They let me go out and wander around the back roads and talk to just interesting people. His travels soon earned him the title Ohio Reporter. They were kind of like the things Kuralt does. Zerker, City Camera News at Devil's Den Park, the home of Whispering Winds Nudist Camp in Tuscarawas County. In 1980, long lines of the gas pumps gave Virgil Dominic a novel idea. Why not send Neil in search of gas-friendly vacations? You and I know them as one-tank trips. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. By the way, that little 1959 Nash Metropolitan really is Neil's car. His favorite destination, any place in the country, in his own personal vacations, well, you won't believe it. I have horrible vacations. I went to Hawaii, came down with near pneumonia. My poor wife uh, had to walk the beach by herself while I laid in bed and coughed and gagged. Uh, we were on another vacation in Wyoming, and our car got hit by a tornado. Uh, these things do happen to me on my own vacations. They don't happen when I go on one tank trips, however. And nobody knows that better than his traveling companions, TV8's videographers. I've known Neil for 22 years, and, uh, you know, I, I consider it a real privilege to be able to, uh, to work with him. And uh, don't tell management this, but uh, I'd probably do it for nothing if I could. I remember one instant we were down on the Mohican River. We were in a canoe, and I was in a canoe in a, ahead of him. Next thing I knew, his canoe tipped over, and he went under. That was fun. Veteran videographer Bob Begani recalls another watery adventure on a one tank to the Poconos. It was funny. Uh, Neil taking a bath in a big glass, bubbles and all. But this is the real highlight of the day. Your very own bubble bath in a giant champagne glass in your living room. Huh. Well, if you think Neil has an enviable job, you're right. 
I've got the greatest job in the world. I've got, I have been so lucky all these years to be allowed to do this, to go where I want to go, to do what I want to do, that, gosh, I'd, I'd hate to think I wasn't going to do them anymore. I mean, it's just too much fun. So, yeah, how I feel about it, I love it. Boy, let me confirm that. A few years ago, he took all of us on a one-tank trip. Mm -hmm. I took Neil fishing. We of what it's all about. It's called Ameriflora 92, and we'll be bringing lots of folks to Ohio this year. Here's Neil and his one tank trip. These cascades look like they've been here for centuries, but in fact, they're man-made. And just one of the many wonders that are being created here on this 80-acre tract in downtown Columbus for Ameriflora 92, a sort of world's fair without the official title. It is a combination of ever-changing entertainment, of international gardens and dining and, and uh, merchandise. It's also all done against the backdrop of floral. The old Franklin Park Conservatory has been expanded to four times its original size. A dozen and a half countries from around the world will have gardens on display from April until October. Ameriflora 92 is expected to attract millions to Columbus this summer. And besides the big show, there'll be other things to see in Columbus, like the enlarged Ohio History of Flight Museum at Port Columbus Airport. They have just quadrupled their size and now can offer such exhibits as the world's first inflatable airplane and displays of a parachute that saved both a pilot and a plane, as well as show off a number of pioneer aircraft that played a big part in aviation history. And don't forget to visit their museum gift shop that offers such things as airlines china and linens, paper airplane replicas of the 1940s, and rare books on aviation. If motorcycles are in your life, then discover the Motorcycle Heritage Museum in Westerville, Ohio. Admission is free, and you can find classic motorcycles going back to a replica of the 1885 Daimler motorcycle that had wooden wheels. The museum is open seven days a week and is located in the American Motorcyclist Association building. <laughs> and finally, if you like a little sparkle in your restaurants, try historic engine house number five in German Village. This old firehouse is decorated with memories of its firefighting past and offers good food. Best bargains are some of the early bird specials each evening. Columbus, Ohio, a great destination, and best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thanks for sharing your time with us, and we hope to see you back here tonight at 11. Have a good evening. And finally, if you ever stole a kiss on a carousel, if there is still a bit of a child in you, then come along as our traveling man journeys tonight to Mansfield, Ohio, for a look at Ohio's newest tourist attraction. Here's Neil Zerker and a one tank trip. They are magical steeds from our past. They prance and whirl to a music that is a part of our lives. But what is truly wonderful about the Richland Carousel Park here in Mansfield is that this is the very first new hand-carved wooden carousel that has been produced in nearly 70 years. The skilled carvers who made these steeds let whimsy be their guides. There are ostriches and zebras, lions, and even cats wearing pirate-like eye patches, as well as the wooden horses that seem to come alive once the music starts. And this merry-go-round is a very special one in another way. It is perhaps the first carousel ever built that is accessible to wheelchairs. There is a ramp, and the horses can be moved to allow the wheelchair to be brought aboard a chariot can be quickly modified to hold the chair. Our winter hours are uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday from 11 to 5, Thursday from 11 to 7, and Sunday from noon to 5. 
and incidentally those hours will be extended when we reach summer. In downtown Mansfield, some of the best places to eat are actually underground, like this one, appropriately called Smitty's Underground Restaurant. That's because it's literally under the square. All the foods are made from scratch, and there are specials each day. When it comes to salads, they're almost more than a meal by themselves. This root beer was created here in Mansfield in the 1920s and is still bottled and sold. And you can get a cold, foamy one here at Smitty's. The underground restaurant, it's a little hard to find, but well worth the search in both quality and price. Mansfield, Ohio, an easy drive from Cleveland, and best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. Neil enjoyed that one. Wow. That's our report for this Wednesday evening. For Denise, Dick, and Dan, I'm Dick Russ. Thanks for sharing your time with us. The CBS Evening News with Dan in water and a new restaurant that specializes in Mongolian stir-fry. Here's Neil on a one tank trip. This may be the way many of our fruits and vegetables will be grown in the future, aquaponically, grown in water instead of soil. The future is already here at Gerhardt's Greenhouse on Route 83 in North Ridgeville. Cucumbers nearly two feet long hang from vines. Nearby glass-covered rooms of tomatoes are slowly ripening. All grown in pots containing mineral water, not soil. And there's another advantage. We don't use any sprays, no insecticides, pesticides, herbicides, none of that. Not at all. Gerhardt's vegetables are shipped all over the United States. At the greenhouse, they offer their seconds. Cucumbers and tomatoes that aren't quite big enough at half the price they sell for in the grocery store. The greenhouse is open Monday through Saturday. It's an honor system. Just drop your money in the slot. One of the oldest antique malls in the state is here in North Ridgeville, located on Route 83. It's called The Hatchery. and houses 25 different dealers under one roof. You can find everything from old furniture, one-of-a-kind clocks and jewelry. They're open daily and will even take credit cards. And this restaurant in North Ridgeville may be one of the first in Ohio to specialize in Mongolian stir-fry. It's not as exotic as it sounds. The first thought was that Mongolian is a food, where in reality it's uh, ingredients which you're used to eating day in and day out. Only we don't use any MSG, we've gone with low sodium, low cholesterol, and gone for the uh, health concept, as well as making it a lot of fun. What it is are things like thinly sliced beef, pork, and lamb, and vegetables, some oriental, and a series of sauces ranging from vinegar to peanut butter that you can put on the meat and vegetables of your choice. Ben Kahn, the cook, uses a set of giant chopsticks to sear it in just 45 seconds. The taste is wonderful. And you can go back as many times as you like and try different combinations. It's food the whole family will like. At least my family did. Mongols is open evenings only. They do accept credit cards. Reservations are accepted for large parties only. So for some Mongolian stir-fry, aquaponically grown vegetables, and some antiques, try a one-tank trip to North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thanks for sharing your time with us. We hope to see you back here tonight. At and has come up with a trip this week that not only includes some good buys on glassware, but offers a free tour of a glass factory and even a stop at a place where they make baskets. So here's Neil and a one tank trip. Cambridge, Ohio has been called the glass capital of Ohio. You can actually watch them make the delicate glassware here at Mosser Glass. Factory tours are free. You can watch each step as molten glass is plucked out of the furnace, then placed in a press to make the glassware. Heat is used to temper the glass in several stages of production. You can watch the process any Monday through Friday. The last tour is just before 3 p.m. While at the Mosser plant, visit their sales room and perhaps take home some of the many items that they make. Everything from paperweights, 
to miniature sets of depression glassware. If you like handmade baskets, you'll want to stop at the Cottage Country Baskets. This is the plant as well as the showroom. Basket makers daily weave their products one by one. They offer a variety of basket sizes, each one handmade. You're welcome to browse and to watch the basket makers at work. If you want to go bargain hunting, you'll want to make a stop here at the Fostoria Glass Company outlet store. They sell nothing but seconds. Glassware that for one reason or another did not pass final inspection. At savings of 50 to 70 percent off the retail price, and sometimes even more than that. In the summertime, when we get the tourists, the buses and all that, then it's, they put different sales on, half price of some things. For example, on the day we visit it, these candle holders were selling for just one dollar. They usually retail for five to six dollars each. The Fostoria Glass Outlet Store is open seven days a week. Cambridge, Ohio, a place for bargains, baskets, and even glassware. And it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thanks for sharing your time with us. We'll see you back here tonight at 11. Good night. yet also some backroom furniture bargains just a couple of the stops tonight as our traveling man neil zerker sets out on another one tank trip if you love the chant of the auctioneer and the sights and sounds of a country sale like here at the weekly Mount Hope Auction Barn, then you'll want to pick up a copy of this brand new newspaper called the Auction and Antique Buyer's Guide, published twice a month. We'd like to include um, uh, schedules of events, antique shows that are going to be happening, and uh, auctions that are going to be happening, and uh, we hope to get reports on pricing and so forth from various uh, auctions and uh, antique shows. The best part, the guide is absolutely free. Just pick one up at a newsstand, or they'll mail you six issues for just $4 a year. It's published in Millersburg. If you're looking for an out-of-the-way restaurant away from the tour buses, try the tiny town of Baltic and Miller's Dutch Kitchen. It's Amish-style food made from scratch each day. The prices are low, and there are daily specials. It's a friendly place that hasn't been discovered yet. Most of the customers are local folks who just like good home cooking. If you're looking for some good Amish-built furniture, you might stop at the Amish Door Furniture Shop in Wilmot. Most of the solid oak furniture they sell is locally made. Everything from dining room sets to children's cradles and cribs. They even offer a solid oak briefcase for the executive who has everything. But for bargains, my favorite room in the store is this one, called the Make an Offer Room. It's filled with furniture that just didn't meet the quality standards set by the operator of the store or maybe scratched and dented. We let the public then make an offer and I've not yet to refuse anything that was reasonable. Amish craftsmanship, Amish food, and a guide to auctions all years and best of all, it's just a one tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thanks for sharing your time with us. We hope to see you 98 cents or less. Just a couple of stops our traveling man Neil Zerker makes this week as he sets out on another one tank trip. It sits here along Route 36, looking like an old railroad station. The name, though, says it all, Unusual Junction. The old rail cars are now unusual stores, like this one that sells nothing but paper party supplies, or the next one that specializes in wedding materials. And there are even more. Now, this is my kind of shop, a shop that sells everything in it for just 98 cents. And the walls and shelves are crammed with items, each one costing 98 cents or less. Over in the old depot, you're welcomed by former Clevelander Jerry McKenna, who owns the complex. 
Get him on the right track right now. Come on in. He says carrying unusual products like Ohio-shaped baskets to the world's hottest pepper sauce is what makes his job interesting. That's the fun part of Unusual Junction. Going out, seeking items of unusual interest, bringing them back. By the way, they also offer lunch here at Unusual Junction, and the food is attractively prepared and tastes great. In nearby Coshocton, you can get an up-close look at how pottery is still handmade here at the Three Rivers Pottery Company, perhaps one of the last large companies that still hand-makes each of their products. Tours are free, and you're also invited to wander through their sales room, where you can buy everything from plates to bowls made right here. While in the Coshocton area, stop at PK's Eggery, where Phyllis Rushing practices the delicate art of jeweled egg making. Using a dentist drill to cut the fragile shells, she slowly cuts the design she wants and then adds gold and stones to it to create what she calls an instant family heirloom. Her display cases are filled with exquisite examples of her work, a collection that has taken her over 30 years to build. She sells both kits to make your own, or some of these eggs already finished, ready to become an instant heirloom in your family. PK's Eggery is closed Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So for eggs that even the Easter Bunny would be proud of, try Coshocton, Ohio. It's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. Beautiful eggs. Really? That's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thanks for sharing your time with us. We hope to see you back here tonight at 11. Have a good evening. week, Neil says he found the hamburger and some places to shop for antiques all on a one tank trip. Allen, Michigan sits quietly astride U.S. Route 12 here in South Central Michigan. The folks here claim to be the antique capital of the Wolverine State. And as far as the eye can see, the signs of antique stores fill the landscape. There's even one store, an antique bookstore, that works on the honor system. All books cost 35 cents each, and you help yourself and put the money in the box. John Allward, who has operated an antique store here for years, says while the town is small, antiques are big business. In the town itself, there are several hundred dealers now. Several in, hundred. In, in individual shops and in several malls. You can find just about anything old that you seek from glass marbles right out of the 1930s to old typewriters to potpourris of furniture and furnishings a century or more old. Allward also operates a small museum dedicated to Native Americans and their culture. You'll find exhibitions of Eskimo art, the beadwork of the Indians of the Southwest Plains, and even an exhibit about cowboys and Indians. Just a few miles south of Allen is the sleepy little village of Reading, Michigan. There's not a lot left to attract visitors, except for one business. The reason I came to this town was to have a hamburger here at Ray's Tavern. You see, a couple of years ago, the newspaper USA Today did a story on hamburgers and said Ray's Tavern made one of the best cheeseburgers in America. Ray's owner, Rosie Riddesiller, served me one of her classic cheeseburgers, and I have to admit, it was pretty good. As for Rosie, she thinks it's very funny that folks think she has some sort of secret recipe. Two patties and two pieces of cheese in the bun. We put onion pickle on the plate, and there's the ketchup mustard on the... If they want deluxe, they have to order. That's a lot of tomato and mayonnaise. Do you put anything else on it? Nope. No salt, pepper? Well, salt. salt. Let me try them. Sure, there's no secret ingredient. <laughs> Not a bit. <laughs> so for cheeseburgers and antiques, head for South Central Michigan. It's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, huh? I don't know. Rosie looked like she had a secret up her sleeve there. I'll bet she did. That's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thanks for sharing your time with us, and we hope to see you. And finally tonight, a brand new restaurant that specializes in Buffalo and a place to sleep out in the country. Those are just two of the stops this week as our travel man Neil Zerker sets out on another one tank trip.
If you like to spend your vacation bargain hunting, this is the place for you. Ohio's largest outlet shopping mall, located just north of Milan and south of Sandusky on U.S. Route 250. Here you'll find more than 45 stores representing all kinds of manufacturers. What can you save at an outlet mall? They claim savings of at least 20%. But uh, some stores discount even deeper than that, 40, 60, even 70 percent off the, the manufacturer's suggested pricing, and then they also run sales. And Elise says if you want super bargains, ask to see the discontinued and less than perfect merchandise that some stores offer. The Lake Erie Outlet Mall is open seven days a week. If you'd like to spend the night in the peace and quiet of the country, go no further than the Boos Family Inn here in Norwalk. They offer five bedrooms, all with central air and private bathrooms, in a lovely old farmhouse. Their rates start at $35 and up, and they throw in a continental breakfast that includes fresh fruit and homemade cinnamon rolls. Speaking of eating, just east of Norwalk is the town of Wakeman and a brand new restaurant called Buffalo's Cafe. And as the name implies, buffalo is the main item on the menu. Owners Larry and Kim Hamilton raise buffalo, or American bison, on their nearby farm. We have 16 right now. We're expecting uh, eight calves around late June. The bison meat, which tastes like fine beef, is not only good, but good for you. It's lower in cholesterol, lower in fat, higher in vitamins and minerals. There's less grease. Open seven days a week, buffalo is always on the menu, not only in buffalo burgers, but also buffalo steaks and in a lot of other things. Oh, we make stuffed peppers, cabbage rolls, uh, we have steaks, chili, tacos, burritos. By the way, you can even get a buffalo burger to go here at Buffalo's Cafe. Best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. Mm, am I hungry? Mm. How about you? <laughs> no <laughs> comment. <laughs> it's our news at six. The CBS Evening News is next. Thank you for sharing your time with us, and we hope to see you here at 11. Good night. Jewels of Lake County, all part of our travel man Neil Zerker's adventures as he sets out on another one tank trip. Just about any time of year is a good time to visit the Holden Arboretum here in Kirtland, Ohio. But especially in the springtime, the wonder of these 3,000 plus acres can best be appreciated. Trails are filled with trees and plants that are ablaze with color. The many ponds and lakes that dot the Arboretum are a quiet oasis of beauty and tranquility. We fashion ourselves as not a truly park-like place, but more of a place where people could get an education on what kinds of plant material they might be able to use around their home grounds. The Arboretum also offers an excellent library specializing in gardening and botany, along with some very rare books on the subject. And there is a gift shop with many unusual items for the home and garden. The Holden Arboretum is open year-round. There is an admission charge. If you'd like something really special for your home, how about a custom mailbox? This is the Mailbox Factory in Kirtland, and they produce just about any kind of mailbox that you can dream up, including one even big enough for our mascot. They also offer this one if you have problems with vandals. So we designed our Hercules model, and we made it 3 16 armor-plated, so it's guaranteed a lifetime. It's solid steel. It weighs what? 52 pounds. It's the mailbox steel. alone. It never will crush a brain. Never. When we first made it, we uh, were testing it. We parked a dozer on it. We tried to shoot it. We tried to blow it up, and all we did was scratch it. That's forever. That's forever. Last mailbox you ever need. Wayne and his crew not only make these mailboxes right here in their factory, but they install them, too. You can't leave Lake County without a stop at George's famous Dinner Bell restaurant in Painesville Township. This is the home of the bowl of soup with a hump in it. That hump is about two inches of chicken and vegetables that rises above the rim of the bowl. George says it's the only way to serve chicken noodle soup. 
I use 28 chickens a day. Another specialty is prime rib. It's served at breakfast, lunch, and dinner for as low as six bucks. Good food and low prices. You're going to like this one. And best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8 in Lake County. And how Neil got four bowls of soup back without spilling a drop in that little car is, is amazing. Along with it, we want to thank uh, Janice and Faye right. from George's Famous Dinner Bell Restaurant in Painesville. I've tried it. It's, it's great. It's huge. This is a normal serving. And it's I know two that. bucks. That's is that a good incredible? bargain. That is a bargain. <laughs> my, my. I love that. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dick. Dick no, Dick dig in while we're saying goodbye. <laughs> It'll take us all night <laughs> to <you>. eat it. <laughs> That's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thanks for sharing your time with us, and we hope to see you back here tonight at 11. Have a good evening. car is a bit more crowded than usual, but when my wife Bonnie and my son Craig discovered I was spending a week at Ameriflora in Columbus, they asked to come along. The boss said okay, and here we are. The first question is just what the heck is Ameriflora 92? Well, that's the official name for this exposition that honors the 500th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's discovery of America. Just how big an event is it? Well, we have some 18 countries on site, and uh, certainly that makes it the largest international event in North America by a mile. Countries such as Russia and China and Japan and Canada, Italy, Malaysia, a wonderful mix from all continents. And uh, we set out, when we first set out, we said it was international, and, and their response makes it that way. They really are, we really do represent the world. In fact, it was big enough on opening day to draw comedian Bob Hope, as well as President and Mrs. Bush to the opening ceremonies. Part of the attraction is the location here on East Broad Street in downtown Columbus, on the site of the old Franklin Park Conservatory, an 88-acre century-old park. All of these types of events uh, usually occur on... Uh uh, reclaim land or old abandoned rail yards and so forth. So I think the, the big difference is the, the natural beauty of the site. The old Franklin Park Conservatory building has been made four times larger for this event. And Navstar, the exposition's tribute to Christopher Columbus, is a 20-ton sculpture made of stainless steel that represents the ships, the Pinta, the Nina, and the Santa Maria, Columbus's fleet and the surrounding Christopher Columbus Mallway consists of 12,000 boxwood shrubs and flowers that sprawl to all points of the compass. If you like statistics, there are over 25 acres of gardens and over three miles of walkways that circle okay. the exposition. And these beautiful cascades that look as though they've been here for centuries, they were made especially for Ameriflora, with boulders brought from Lake Superior. The Cascades are perhaps one of the most photographed areas in the park. All in all, it's shaping up to be a very big event for both Columbus and Ohio this year. And we'll take a close-up look at some of the attractions in our next report as we continue our special series of one-tank trips to Ameriflora 92 in Columbus, Ohio. I'm Neil Zucker, News Center 8. And it was a perfect day today to be out in oh, Neil's yes. Nash or doing anything outside. That's right. A high-stakes bingo game and a visit to an Indian reservation. Both are on the agenda tonight as our travel man Neil Zerker sets out for western New York State on another one-tank trip. This is one of the biggest stake bingo games in the northeastern United States. The Seneca Indian Nation Irving, New York runs bingo games seven nights a week, year-round, and the potential winner's jackpot can be big, really big. The jackpot tonight for our Bonanza is $32,100. That's a progressive jackpot that each night is now $100 is added onto it. The highest jackpot so far the Indians have awarded is $54,000. Bingo Hall is located on the Katargaris Indian Reservation here on Route 5 along Lake Erie and attracts people from all over. Oh yes, from the Cleveland area, 
from Canada, Toronto, uh, from Pennsylvania through Pittsburgh, all the way over to Scranton. Incidentally, they also have a non-smoking room for players. How much did I win? Not a penny. By the way, since the Indian Reservation is considered a sovereign nation, they do not pay state taxes, and their stores, like this Seneca Service Mart, just down the road, can sell gasoline and cigarettes at far cheaper prices than even the national discount chains. Next door in Silver Creek, New York, is Valvo's, a most unusual store that sells cement garden statues and fresh-made chocolates. In fact, three generations of the family have been candy makers. And one of the special reasons you want to stop at Valvo's is sponge candy. It's kind of different. It's like a honeycomb type of candy, I would say. Uh, like, you know, it uh, um, uh, kind of melts in your mouth when you eat it, you know. It's good. Yeah, right. <laughs> Very good. You, you eat it yourself. Yeah, now that I eat it, yeah. <laughs> in fact, they only make it once a year because it's so much work to create. But the other thing Valvo's is known for is garden statues that they make right here. Over 100 different designs from famous figures of the past to a cement version of the family pet. No, not that pet. These pets, the kind you don't have to feed. Western New York is just about a three-hour drive from Cleveland, and best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. All right, a quick correction now on something. The first one tank trip has it all next. America, just two of the attractions our traveling man Neil Zerker discovers this week as he sets out on a one tank trip. If you want a great way to enjoy our late spring and early summer weather, try a canoe trip down the Tuscarawas River. The beauty of this tranquil stream is equal only by the history it has contributed to the settling of Ohio. The NTR canoe livery offers trips of 5 to 30 miles, but they also offer something else you might not find at other canoe liveries. So you also want to tilt your pan as you're shaking. That's right. You can pan for real gold here at the NTR canoe livery. Traces of gold left here by the glacier as it carved out this valley but don't plan on getting rich. Well, in this you might find about three or four flakes. Three or four flakes of gold. Okay. Depends on how good you are. <laughs> Actually, I found several flakes. It costs five dollars to rent the equipment. They guarantee you'll find a couple of flakes of gold. Another discovery you'll want to make here in the Tuscarawas Valley is Tuscora Park here in New Philadelphia. This beautiful, clean, pint-sized amusement park is run by the city and offers carousel rides for just 25 cents. And it's a real carousel ride. We run a five-minute carousel ride, which is, I guess, unheard of. I guess you get your money's worth. That's right. Order. Everybody beg to get off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when the kids start to fall off the horses, we shut it down. <laughs> in all, in this city park, there are eight rides, swimming pools, picnic groves, and even a lovely fountain. Admission to the park is free. Just pay for the rides, and they're each a quarter. Before we leave, let's stop at the Basket Factory Outlet Store here in Beach City. This company ships baskets to all parts of the world, but you can find some real bargain baskets here and some of their discontinued models and overruns. We even found one large enough for our traveling mascot. Gold panning, carousels, and basket bargains all here in Tuscarawas County Best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our report for this evening. For Denise, Dick, and Dan, I'm Dick Ruff. It took nearly three years, but finally a major Northern Ohio tourist attraction is back in business. Our travel man, Neil Zerker, heads for Canal Fulton tonight to check out an old ride that is all new. It's been three years since a boat sailed on this canal. That's when the old boat was taken out of service because of dry rot. Volunteers have been working ever since to finish this cement hull version named Helena III. These youngsters got their first ride on the new boat and loved it. 
Peering at the constantly changing scenery along the mile-long restored section of canal, there are baby geese to watch, and even a chance to catch a glimpse of turtles sunning themselves on nearby stumps, and listening to the leather lung captain as the boat approaches the locks. A ride on the Helena is like a time machine, taking you to a quiet, slower time when all journeys were at a leisurely pace. Even our mascots seem to enjoy the ride. The canal boat runs every day starting at 1.30 in the afternoon. The fare is $6 for adults and $4 for children. Equally exciting is the refurbished look of downtown Canal Fulton with its new shops and stores, places like Toys Time Forgot a store that deals only in collectible toys from as far back as the 1920s. I don't know if I get a bigger kick out of the kids coming in and seeing the toys yeah. or the parents seeing something they had when they were a child. Osser's Dairy is still on the corner. You can get a fresh made ice cream cone for as little as 45 cents. Three generations of customers have worn down this doorway. And there is this shop, Phineas Foggs, where you can see the latest fad in rubber stamp art and card making. It's sure come a long way from those smudgy stamps that we had as kids. And another favorite of mine, Becky Knapp's deliciously different candy store. You can't leave Canal Fulton without sampling her chocolate Canal Mud Candy. The local folks rub elbows with the tourists at the Emporium Restaurant, an antique store. All the decorations are for sale, and they serve some of the best food in town at reasonable prices. Canal Fulton, a fun destination, and it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. <laughs> Chocolate canal mud candy. Have you ever had that? And it is good. So we're going to have to... And Neil didn't bring us any. I again. know. And what was that stuffed animal on the back of his car? It's Neil's <laughs> little buddy. That. That's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thanks for sharing your time with us. And we hope to see you back here tonight at 11. Have a good night. That's Neil's lookout. Tez he joins us live now from down... New attractions we'll be enjoying on our vacations this summer. Neil says that at least one of them is guaranteed to give you a real lift. Here's Neil. We've come to Cedar Point to take a look at what's new in Ohio's vacation land. One of the best rides at the point this year isn't in the park. It's just off the beach. This is North Coast Parasail, and for a fee, you can fly like a bird over the Cedar Point Lakefront. The park's Robin Ennis demonstrated the ride for me, showing that riding several hundred feet in the air behind a speedboat is just like sitting in a swing. While Robin flew, a crew member was describing what I was going to see. You'll be able to see out near Putin Bay and all the islands, and if you look out towards the north, you'll be able to see Canada. I admit as the chute filled and the boat accelerated, I was a bit concerned. But suddenly, I was gently lifted into the air. And moments later, I was flying. From 300 feet up, the boat looks like a speck slashing its way through the smooth waters of the lake. The ride lasts about 20 minutes and ends all too soon. Incidentally, you don't have to pay the admission price at Cedar Point to just ride the parasail. In downtown Sandusky, just follow the sound of the carousel to the newest attraction, the Merry-Go-Round Museum. This museum is filled with carousel memorabilia from all over the country, and even some memories of the amusement parks of northern Ohio. We have the scenery panels from Crystal Beach Park in Vermilion, and sometimes we have one of the horses from Euclid Beach Park, and sometimes we have other Euclid Beach Park displays. There's also a talented carver working on restoration jobs that you can watch. And best of all, a full-sized working carousel that offers a free ride with every tour. From a ride on the carousel to a ride on the fastest tour boat on Lake Erie, the Jet Express in Port Clinton. This year, there are two Jet Expresses, making the trip from Port Clinton to Putin Bay in just 22 minutes at over 40 miles per hour. Not only is it a quick way to get to the Lake Erie Islands, but the boats also run until 11.45 at night. And if you're lucky, you might even be aboard when both ships are going the same way and you get to participate in a race back to port. 
A lot of new things to see and do here in Ohio's vacation land. And best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. <laughs> and that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thanks for sharing your time with us. We hope to see you back here tonight at 11. Destinations tonight is our traveling man, Neil Zerker, heads south on another one-tank trip. Astonishment might be the best way to describe most people's first glimpse of the Palace of Gold, hidden away on a country road high atop a mountain here in Moundsville, West Virginia. Built 17 years ago by the Hare Krishna religious community as a home for the religious leader, it was turned into a memorial shrine when he died. The Rose Garden is also truly spectacular. In fact, it has been honored twice as one of the best in America. My son Craig and I sat a few minutes just to enjoy the aroma of the thousands of roses that are now in bloom. Inside the palace, you see a different kind of beauty. Majestic chandeliers, intricate stained glass windows, and rooms filled with highly polished marble and other semi-precious stones. These massive teak wood carved doors lead to the main prayer room. The palace and grounds seem to be in a constant state of construction. The newest project is this road leading to a massive statue of the religious leader. We have plans to develop it into uh, what we call the Garden of the Spiritual Teachers. And you see that in the background the uh, large statue of Srila Prabhupada to whom the palace was dedicated as a memorial. They eventually plan to add statues of other religious leaders to the garden. Just 20 minutes away is the Ohio River in Wheeling, West Virginia, where we stop for dinner at Lou's Landing, located on a barge on the Wheeling waterfront. They serve everything from hamburgs to steaks. And while you dine, you can watch the traffic on the Ohio River. Downtown Wheeling is the home to the Capitol Theater, where every Saturday night, some of America's most famous country music stars take part in the long-running radio show, Jamboree USA. The walk of stars out front reflects the many big names that have played here in this old theater. People like Loretta Lynn. Radio sure tells it like it is every time I turn it on. Someone the tops in country music is just across the Ohio border here in Wheeling. And best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, there's actually, no leaves the on the trees. That's what we were just looking at. That's right. And I don't know where they went. Of course, mm. the way the temperature's been, we can understand that's that. Right. That's our news at 6. Zerker. Tonight, he makes a visit down on the farm, discovers a place that sells Moose Tracks ice cream, and finds an inexpensive way to take care of the ups and downs in our lives. Here's Neil's One Tank Trip. Although it has been around only 17 years, Souter Farm and Craft Village has become a major tourist attraction here in northwestern Ohio. A sort of cross between the charm of a small town museum with a sweep of a greenfield village. Here you can visit with artisans of yesterday, like the local gunsmith. What you doing? Uh, working on a rifle, uh, just shaving out some of the wood with a wood rasp here to get it to its final dimensions. Or walk through a pleasant village garden filled with herbs to the house of the local herb lady who will tell you that the garden was the family drugstore once upon a time. Sage. That was for all your greasy duck, and your deer, your rabbit, but you know what? That was also a medicine. Can you imagine having to drink that? You'd be ready to go to school the next day just so you didn't have to drink any more of that stuff. My son Craig was concerned that perhaps the kids had been forgotten here. Oh, gee, we've got lots of bunnies and peacocks and chickens and ducks and swans. We also have a miniature train that takes a ride around. Uh, the horse-drawn wagon ride is a lot of fun. And our staff is all geared to talk to the youngest person in the group. So we find that youngsters usually have a real good day here. My personal favorite attraction is the museum that holds a little bit of everything. 
including a display that traces the history of the bathroom. Both the beauty and the history of Northwest Ohio comes to life here at Sauter Farm and Craft Village. Now when the local folks want ice cream, they head for Knopfziger's Ice Cream Store here in Archbold. They offer some really unusual homemade ice creams with names like Scud Buster and Moose Tracks or French Silk. Craig opted for Moose Tracks, which turned out to be pieces of fudge and caramel in vanilla ice cream. And before we leave, a little bargain hunting at the Archbold Furniture Factory Outlet Store. Here you can buy their factory seconds, discontinued stock, at considerable savings, including some ladders that they also make. The store is open Monday through Saturday, and credit cards are welcome. Archbold in Northwest Ohio. And best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker. And our traveling man, Neil Zerker, and his son, Craig, are on their way to Ottawa, Canada, to see the sights. And here's Neil and Craig in a special one-tank trip. Canada's capital of Ottawa offers so much to see and do. From the spectacle of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police musical ride, to the regal changing of the guard on Parliament Hill. From the quiet charm of a double-decker bus in a country lane, to a small sidewalk cafe where you can while away an afternoon. There is the magnificence of its National Gallery of Art. The beauty of the Venetian-like canal that runs the length of the capital city. And of course, the focal point of the city, Parliament Hill, sitting like a fortress overlooking the Ottawa River. My son Craig and I are headed for Canada to see and experience all of these things. So how do we go all the way to Ottawa on one tank of gas? Simple, we only drove to Toronto, and then took the train the rest of the way. The Canadian Via Rail System offers several trains every day from Toronto to Ottawa. The service is not only convenient, but fast as well. We're allowed to go 95 miles an hour. And they keep the speed at the 95 mile per hour marker a good bit of the way. And that means that it's often quicker to take the train than to drive. Approximately four hours between Toronto that and Ottawa. usually takes how long to drive the car? I would estimate about five hours. They can save mm -hmm. at least an hour. Oh, definitely. And of course, then you don't have all that hassle with parking once you arrive at your destination. A good part of the journey runs right along the edge of Lake Ontario. You can sit back and watch the world go by, perhaps catch up on some work, or just take a snooze. Part of the first class service they offer includes food and drink. On the menu of the day we traveled was filet mignon or smoked salmon. Craig said he'd rather have a hot dog. He settled for steak. If only all decisions were that easy. What's the cost to make this high-speed trip from Toronto to Ottawa? About $100 Canadian each way. But they also offer large discounts, some up to 40%, if you can travel during midweek. And then there's the fact that U.S. money is worth more than Canadian. So in the long run, taking the train could turn out to be cheaper than driving all this distance. You can board a VIA train at either end of Lake Erie, either Windsor or Niagara Falls. Incidentally, another nice thing about VIA trains they run on time. In fact, we arrived in Ottawa nearly 10 minutes ahead of schedule. This is Canada's 125th birthday and Craig and my first visit to the Canadian capital. So we're anxious to see the town. In our next report, we'll tour Parliament Hill, and see the famous changing of the guard, all part of a special one tank trip to Canada. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8 tank trip to Ottawa, Canada. Here's Neil and son Craig on a Canadian one tank trip. By using the train from Toronto, we were able to stretch this one tank trip all the way to Canada's capital of Ottawa. Dominating the city skyline is Parliament Hill, the seat of the Canadian government. The best way to see Parliament is with one of the many knowledgeable capital guides that give tours throughout the day. 
So right now we're in the uh, foyer of the House of Commons. The House is over in that direction. It's the lower chamber of Parliament, the elected chamber, a bit like the House of Representatives in Washington, and you like. This is an incredibly beautiful building, from its Hall of Honor, with its many arches, to the warmth and charm of the wood-paneled National Library in the rotunda that overlooks the Ottawa River. The highest point on Parliament Hill is the Peace Tower and its observation deck 22 stories above the ground, where you can get a bird's eye view of the capital city. On the ground floor is the Hall of Remembrance and its book of names of every Canadian who has died in the service of his country. Every day at 11 o'clock they turn it according to a specific schedule so that at the same page is showing at the same time every year so the families can know what, when a person's name is coming up. But what draws everyone to Parliament Hill is this. Tradition. The red jacketed guards of Parliament Hill. Their story starts here at this Canadian Armed Forces base outside of town. They are members of the Reserve of the Canadian Armed Forces who volunteer during their summer training to also provide the ceremonial guard for Parliament and the Governor General's house. It's a lot of work and it's not easy. What can I say? Five days, that's all we have. Once you go past the dais and the ice right is given, then the dressing's by the right. That's why there's a right guy. When they come here, they do a general military training course before they're ever allowed to don this uniform and go on Parliament Hill. Uh, and even while they're doing the ceremonial functions, they continue infantry training and reserve training. All that training pays off each morning during the summer when the troops, resplendent in bearskin hats and red coats, parade down the streets of Ottawa and onto the grounds of Parliament to perform the ceremonial changing of the guard. When the troops finish and march off down Elgin Street back to their armory, they pass the Lord Elgin Hotel, a landmark for a half century in downtown Ottawa and the place that we stayed while visiting the capital. The Lord Elgin has just completed an $11 million refurbishing. We found the rooms to be compact but clean and the furnishings in great condition. The best part is the fact that the hotel is within walking distance of Parliament Hill and an added bonus to you pet lovers who like to travel with your pets this is one of the few hotels in downtown Ottawa that allows well-behaved pets in the room. Some of their package plans offer prices as low as $70 per night. In our next report, we visit some world-class museums, and Craig gets a rickshaw tour of the Byward Market, and we both learn about an Ottawa delicacy called Beaver Tails. I hope you'll join us as we continue a special one-tank trip to Ottawa, Canada. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. Well, that looks like a trip for you, Dick. You can take your pets along. We well, had a fire plug out front. front. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for you to Ellen. say. Marking that nation's 125th birthday. Tonight, they visit some of the major attractions in Ottawa, the capital city, all part of a special one-tank trip. It's been called the last great museum and an architectural masterpiece. It's the giant Canadian Museum of Civilization that covers acres here just across the river from Parliament. Inside, you'll find majestic totem poles that are the centerpiece of an exhibit about early natives of this land and their way of life. Many of these totems have been cut from a single tree. You can also take a walk through time in the museum from the earliest exploration of the North American continent down through the years as whaling stations. Small village squares unfold around each corner. Another wing of the museum is dedicated to children that is definitely hands-on for the kids, like this puppet theater. There is also a taxi from Pakistan that caught Craig's attention. What do you think, Craig? You think this would replace our little car? Yeah. From an igloo to a clown's wig, 
children are invited to live out their fantasies in this special museum. Incidentally, if you visit the museum on Thursday, they offer free admission. We took a lunch break and a stroll through the Byward Market. This is where farmers come to sell their produce and plants. One of the charms of this city on the Quebec border is that many of the merchants unconsciously switch back and forth from English to French when talking. And it was here that Craig and I learned about a local delicacy called the beaver tail. It's a whole wheat pastry that we stretch into the shape of a beaver tail, and then we cook it on soy oil. After we cook it, we put um, butter, then we put cinnamon sugar, cinnamon sugar lemon, any kind of topping on top. Beaver tail, Craig. You ready? All right. After sampling them, we agreed they are quite good. And it was here at the Byward Market that Craig got his first rickshaw ride. They had a good time. <laughs> For a fee, these hardy young men and women will give you a fast-paced ride around the several blocks that make up the market area. The spectacular glass-walled National Gallery offers this dramatic entry into the largest collection of Canadian art in the world. Here you'll find sculpture and carvings in silver and gold, paintings that capture the early years of this huge country, and some whimsical modern art that takes many shapes and forms. But perhaps the most fantastic exhibit is the reconstruction of the Rideau Street Chapel inside the museum. In the 70s, unfortunately, it was destroyed, demolished, but luckily, the chapel was, was kept and has been restored and was painstakingly put up and we're very proud of it. It's, it's a beautiful example of Gothic uh, architecture. Another enduring symbol of Canada is its Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And in our next report, we get an opportunity to see their famous musical ride. Craig and I will see more of Ottawa by bus and by canal boat all part of a special one-tank trip to Canada. Please come along. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. Now, have you noticed that Craig has taken on the role of Neil's taste tester? <laughs> you know? Of course, I wouldn't mind. All that no, stuff it's, looks it's a, good. It's a good job, but... Yeah. Yeah. He tastes a lot of hot dogs. <laughs> <That's right. Yeah. laughs> Here, Craig, try this yeah, one. He Sorry. turned down <laughs> steak on the train yesterday. Yeah. You know, whatever well. he was eating looked like a hot dog, even though it wasn't. But. <laughs> We've got some uh, different kind of weather moving in. Our Canadian friends brought Zerker on a one-tank trip. Neil is our tour guide this week in Canada, helping our neighbors to the north celebrate their 125th anniversary. This evening, an up-close look at one of the living symbols of Canada. We took both car and rail to get here, and there's so much to see that you'll need several days just to experience the highlights of the town. An easy way to get acquainted with Ottawa is to walk it. But if your feet give out, or it starts to rain, then consider a tour on one of these wonderful old double-decker buses. You can pick one up right across from the War Memorial on Parliament Hill. For an hour and a half, you'll see the sights with an experienced guide pointing out interesting facts. The roof is the Nicholas Street Youth Hostel. This used to be a prison, and the last public hanging in Canada took place here. Another way to see the town is by canal boat. The Rideau Canal, which runs through the heart of the city, was built after the War of 1812 as a supply line in case of an attack by the United States. Today, it's a pleasant way for Americans and other nationalities to get to know the Canadian capital. This afternoon, we'll be taking a leisurely cruise down the Rideau Canal system. We'll be traveling uh, 16 kilometers, or about 12 miles, and this should take us about one hour and 15 minutes. If Canada has a symbol other than the maple leaf, it has to be the red-coated Mounties. Royal Canadian Mounted Police. This is the headquarters of the ceremonial unit of the Mounties and the only members of the elite force that still wear the scarlet coats and Smokey the Bear hats. 
Each member of this unit volunteers to spend three years in the ceremonial unit that travels all over the world. Each member must spend every morning being closely inspected by Mounty officials to be sure that he or she measures up to the spit and polish image that they require. These are also members of the famed RCMP musical ride. And if they're not on the road and you're in Ottawa, you're invited to attend. This is free. This is probably the best show in town and it's one certainly I never tire of. I've seen their performance a million times and every single time it brings a tear to my eye. Um, the musical ride is, uh, is a regiment that Canadians are very proud of and it's recognized worldwide. The full dress rehearsal is held in the morning. The actual musical ride ceremony is held at sunset. These match black horses are especially trained for the RCMP at their own breeding farm located nearby. Each of the Mounties must take at least six months of equestrian training before being allowed to take part in the intricate musical ride that is done with no vocal commands between horse or riders. And if a hat blows off during the show, they're not allowed to retrieve it until the end of the performance. The big finale is when all of the 32 members of the ride gather at one end of the field lower their lances, and stage an old-fashioned cavalry charge down the field. <laughs> A sort of hair-raising way to end our visit to Ottawa as we board the train for the quick trip back to Toronto in our car. But we're not done yet. In our next report, my son Craig and I make a stop at the Shaw Festival and visit the first capital of Canada, all on a special one-tank trip to Canada. I'm Neil Zerker, News Centre 8. Well, it's a good thing they have that cool up air up there in Canada mm -hmm. because they're dressed so warmly. Boy, if they were in Cleveland, they'd be cooking today. <laughs> the, the one song you heard, da 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 dum da dum that was General Custer's song with the Michigan 7th Cavalry. He, they played that as he went into battle. Now, these guys yeah. came out a little better in their exercise. Up until a little bighorn, right. yeah. yeah. But anyway, mm -hmm. we uh, appreciated the westerly breeze today, and uh, Denise commented earlier the humidity is obviously uh, yeah, it's getting back. up there. And his son Craig wrap up their visit with a stop at one of the oldest towns in Canada, all part of a one-tank trip. Canada may be 125 years old, but the country really started here at Niagara-on-the-Lake many years earlier. This was Canada's first capital. And this picture postcard town seems to have changed little in the years since. My son Craig and I found all kinds of interesting little stores in which to shop. In fact, it seems hard to believe that the razzle-dazzle of Niagara Falls is only 10 minutes away. Here, time seems to have stopped sometime around the turn of the century. This is the middle of the fruit belt of Ontario. And farmers still set up on the main street to sell fresh berries and muffins made just that morning. The accommodations seem to match the town. We stayed here at the Pillar and Post, an inn where Queen Elizabeth once spent the night. They offer a package that includes four-poster bed, fireplace, and even a whirlpool bathtub for as little as about $85 American. That also includes dinner in their dining room and breakfast the next morning. You can also rent bicycles here, another fun way to see this lovely Canadian town. And another reason you might want to visit this community is its internationally famous George Bernard Shaw Theater Festival that's held each summer. Let's see what's on the schedule for today, Craig. It looks like it's going to be Charlie's, uh, Charlie's Aunt. That's over at the festival. What's here at the Royal George? On the Town. Hey, that's a musical. I think you'd like that one. Okay, you want to see it? Okay, let's go. New York, New York, a hell of a town. The Bronx is up, but the battery's down. The people ride in a hole in the ground. New York, New York, it's a hell of a town. After the theater, there's just enough time to do a bit more shopping before we head back to Cleveland. Well, that's our trip to Canada. Craig, how did you like Ottawa? 
Yeah, I really like the train ride and the Mounties, but why didn't we meet the Prime Minister when we were through Parliament? He was busy. That's what you said about President Bush last year when we visited Washington. Next year, Craig. Maybe next year. That's what you said last year. <laughs> Let's go home, son. Neil Zerker and Craig on a special one-tank trip to Canada. I don't know about you, but I think I want Craig's job. They're good buddies, aren't he they? He gets to go all the good places and eat all the yeah. best food. And He's seen a lot. It's Craig fun. was in the newsroom earlier. Oh, Munch, was he? Munching on a hot dog. Oh, <laughs> his favorite <laughs> nice food. Nice young man. Well. Choice of a fantasy suite or a tent under the stars to spend the night. Just a few of the things discovered by our traveling man, Neil Zerker, as he sets out on another one tank trip. If you like to bargain hut in small, out-of-the-way towns, this one is for you. Cherry Tree Toys is located in downtown Belmont, Ohio, population less than 400. What they make is wooden toys and whirly gigs. You know, those wind catchers that use animated figures to show you that the wind is blowing. They also sell craft supplies throughout their shop here and worldwide through a catalog. If you'd like to spend the night in something a bit fancier than a roadside motel, you might consider one of these theme suites at the Days Inn in St. Clairsville, Ohio. The suite I'm in is called the Oriental Suite. It even has a mirror over top of the bed, king-sized, of course. And believe it or not, up there on top of the bed are lights that go from red to green to blue. My son Craig discovered the whirlpool bath in the suite and refused to get out until he looked like a prune. Our little mascot decided he liked the French-themed room with its canopied bed. The cost for these suites, about $80 a night on weekends, but make reservations early. These are the most popular rooms in the motel. If you'd like to spend the night in a less expensive place, how about a tent for just $16 a night? You get two cots, obviously the tent, um, a lantern, Coleman stove, and a cooler. It's called Rent-A-Camp, and for your $16, you get a tent all set up and everything else you need for a night except food and blankets. The Rent-A-Camp program started out uh, as an experiment for people who do not want to go out and buy a tent, buy the stove, buy the lantern, to come out where they can try it, see if they like it. Uh, but anymore, the people are just using it as a vacation. Rather than pack their own stuff. Rather than pack their own stuff. Marcamp also offers another unique feature, a handicapped section of the park with paved, all-purpose trails and historic exhibits that are hands-on for sight-impaired visitors. And to cap it all off, some of the best fishing in Ohio can be found at Barcamp Lake. A getaway spot. And a farm that started a sausage empire. Here's Neil in a one-tank trip to Rio Grande, Ohio. This is a Bob Evans restaurant, not exactly an unusual sight. There are over 270 of them nationwide. But back 30 years ago in 1962, there were none. And that was when sausage maker Bob Evans of Rio Grande, Ohio, decided to build this one to stop so many people from coming to the door of his home. It started out that he became famous from his TV commercial selling sausage. And so many people would come by the house, he thought it would be a little more convenient to have a restaurant here for everyone to taste the sausage and meet Bob and not be such an inconvenience to the family, that type of thing. So Bob Evans built this restaurant here on his farm in Rio Grande and invited anyone and everyone to stop in and visit the farm. They did, and they're still coming 30 years later. And this is probably one of the best known spots in the farm. You put the chicken in here and that door opens up and he takes off flying. This is what will be happening at the Bob Evans Farm October 9th through the 11th, the annual chicken flying contest, with all the assorted festival activities that go along with an event of this magnitude. But any day of the week you're invited to visit the Bob Evans Farm, there's always a lot to do, from a quiet carriage ride along a country road that slices through the farm, to a canoe trip down the Raccoon Creek, 
a stream that legend says Daniel Boone once used. To a visit to the pioneer village of log huts and crafts people who keep alive the talents of another era. And then when they grew up, they worked us. <laughs> so, so we all had to work. There is more to see and do from the village blacksmith still using the tools of a century ago to the woodworker making shingles for a roof the way they were made when this state was new and this was still the western frontier. And when you get tired of walking over the nearly 2,000 acres of this farm, you can ride. There are free tractor-drawn wagon rides, sort of like a hay ride without the hay. One of the best things about the Bob Evans farm is that except for festival times, admission to the farm is free. Rio Grande, Ohio, a trip down to the farm, and it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. He also followed his nose to some award-winning barbecued ribs, and all of it was just a one-tank trip away. Out here in Ashtabula County, on this beautiful 2,000-acre ranch, you can take part in one of the hottest new outdoor sports in America. It's called sporting clays. It's sort of like playing golf with shotguns. You get 50 shots at clay disc. The more you hit, the higher the score. But like golf, you keep moving to more difficult stations. And even though you know the disc is going to be thrown, you don't know how high or which way. Obviously, for hunters, it's a great way to sharpen their eye and test their reflexes. It would simulate any hunting conditions that, sh you know, that might arise in upland bird or goose or duck hunting and even rabbit hunting. But you don't have to be a hunter to do that. No, you don't have to be a hunter. Oh. Absolutely. It, it's just uh, a lot of people come out here for the shooting sport. It costs $15 oh. for the first 50 rounds. The ranch is open to the public. Top score is 50. They consider you a top gun if you can score in the 40s. A double figure score is considered average, but they had no rating for my score of four. By the way, while reservations are not required, they are a good idea. Another outdoor sport the whole family can try is fishing. Fishermen say one of the best spots around is the Ladue Reservoir here on Route 422 in Geauga County. You can rent boats at the boathouse. Cost is about $8 for four hours. Rumor has it that you can sometimes smell these ribs cooking at Blazin' Bill's restaurant, just east of the reservoir on Route 422. This is just a basting sauce that we use on the ribs for flavoring. But they do serve the ribs with not one, but four sauces that they make. How hot are they? Some sauces are so hot they, they kind of lose their flavor because you go numb when you eat them. Happily, that's not really the case here. Even their hottest sauce, Heat Wave, still adds to the wonderful flavor of their ribs and chicken. Try it and you'll understand why they've been a national finalist in rib cook-offs. And what more pleasant place to try their food than on the patio here at the restaurant, where the kids can burn off a little steam in the sandbox at the edge of the patio. This is a true family restaurant. Blazin' Bills is closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. An outdoor adventure in the field, on the water, and at the table Best of all, it's just a one tank trip away. City of Cleveland's Crime Watch program and help put a stop to crime on our streets. Call 664 4646 and take the time to care from TV8. Finally, tonight, if you're wondering what to do with the kids this weekend, our traveling man, Neil Zerker, says do what he does. Let them pick the destination. That's what happens this week, and Neil and son Craig set out on another one-tank trip. My son Craig chose this trip. Our first stop was Macedonia, Ohio, at a place called Fun and Stuff. It's a unique place that offers a combination of things for kids of all ages, from these bumper boats to the country's only indoor go-kart track that allows youngsters as young as six years old to safely operate the car. It's usually their first driving experience and they love it. They also offer both outdoor and indoor miniature golf ranges. And there are batting cages where future baseball stars and those that never were can fan away at the balls. Craig's favorite was this, their adult-sized Grand Prix Raceway. 
where he was able to take the wheel and lap his old man three times by the end of the race. Fun and Stuff also offers kiddie rides for smaller children and video games. They're open seven days a week. Our next stop was the Cuyahoga Valley Railroad. The tour train now makes runs Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays from Cleveland to Akron. Through the Cuyahoga Valley National Recreation Area, this beautiful valley. And for dinner, we ended up at the Fort Liberty Restaurant in Greentown, south of Akron. Here, part of the entertainment is watching other people eat. You see, they cook steaks weighing one to five pounds over a wood fire. I had a one pound T-bone, while Craig settled for a buffalo burger. But these four people opted to attempt the five pound challenge. They have just over an hour to eat a five pound steak, potatoes, salad, and bread and butter. If they do, they get the steak free. If they fail, they pay $24.99 for the attempt. All four tried mightily. After about 30 minutes, eyes seemed to glaze over. The chewing slowed, and the smile seemed to leave their face. When they go to eating a lot of meat, they find out it's a little different than eating a bushel of corn or something. <laughs> and on this day, all four failed to meet the challenge and had to pay. But they got to take the remains home in a doggy bag. By the way, the owner, Harry Seablad, is also a clergyman and on Sunday turns this restaurant into a church. And following services Sunday morning offers a free buffet to anyone attending the services. A fun journey from Macedonia to Greentown. And best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. The uh, Cuyahoga River Valley train ride is really something, especially when the leaves are changing. I'll have to try it out. Yeah, you really should. That's great. But the Indy cars, we've got to try that one. <laughs> Those look like fun. <laughs> That's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thanks for sharing your time with us, and we hope to see you back here at 11. Good night. <laughs>